I'm Daphne from Daps Makeup here to give you the quick tea on luxury makeup and today, today should be a fun video because today I'm going to be talking about my six month faves. Um, we're officially in July so we are clearly officially past the halfway point so I thought this would be a good time to reflect back on the purchases that I've made, let you know what are my favorite, maybe give you some updates on the items that I've bought. Um, and some of the items I'm going to talk about have not been featured before so a lot of them yes I have dedicated videos to those and you should watch those videos <laughs> to see my full review of those items. Um, some of those were first impression um, videos so it is good to watch me now to see what I think about them now that I've been using a lot of these products for quite some time but like I said there's also gonna be some items that I haven't had any dedicated videos for some maybe I might have put a YouTube short and some you would have only known about them if you follow me on Instagram that's underscore makeup where I've already done posts about them but I did make a dedicated YouTube video but I still wanted to talk about it here um, the most of it is going to be luxury you know that's what I primarily focus on in my YouTube video but I do have some items that are indie brand or maybe high-end brands um, that I still do love. Um, and so I just want to tell you everything about all the items that I've bought so far in these six months, which ones are my favorite. And I also take this time to not only let you know what are my favorite products, but I'm probably reflecting on looking at the kind of purchases that I bought, the types of makeup that I bought, kind of reflecting on how my makeup style has changed in this year compared to past years. Um, that, you know, is probably partly influenced by, you know, myself getting older and, you know, makeup preferences changing, you know, just a part of getting older. But also part of it is also just because of what is um, being pushed by the makeup industry at this time. What are the popular type of items that are being perpetuated a lot right now? So it is interesting, um, the certain trends that are big right now um, and how different it has been in the last couple of years. So let's dive in because I'm telling you, oh, I have a bag full of items. This is heavy. So I uh, brought out <laughs> all my faves from six months and it's all in this bag. So we're going to open up. Um, normally, like, especially if you follow me like on Instagram when I do my yearly phase, I usually break it up by um, categories. You know, I'll be like, oh, favorite eyeshadows, favorite blushes, favorite lipsticks. I think this time for this video, I'm going to break it up by brands. I'm just going to go from the major brands because there were a lot of items that I got based on brands. Um, just to be different, we'll um, break it up that way. Um, and what's also very different this year is I have to say, I don't have that much eyeshadow. In all the previous years, eyeshadows was always my biggest area of purchase. Um, I would always leave that the last category to tell you my faves because that was kind of like, I felt like all the excitement was there and that's where the majority of my purchases went. This year, I think it's probably the item that I bought the least, believe it or not. So we'll talk about that. So we're gonna go by brands rather than categories. And the first brand we're gonna start with is my current, you know, been my go-to favorite brand in general, Chanel. So let's start with All that. right, yeah, so for Chanel, I got quite a few products. I think I started off the year with Chanel. It was either Chanel or Prada. Um, so let's start there. So we started off the year um, with the La Beige Healthy Winter Glow um, products. And this is kind of a new category. They always have a La Beige, but they've never done Healthy Glow Winter Glow, um, which was fun and exciting. And it was a great way to start off the year. I have two items that I purchased from that collection and I still love, still love. I loved it then, still love it now. Um, so one was the blush. Um, they had three, um, three shades, but of course I bought the deepest shade, which is the mauve glacé. I always love a berry uh, tone blush. Um, I have been using this a lot. Um, and you can see the embossing is still holding pretty well. The CCs are like gone. There was like two CCs in the, um, in the center, but the icicles general shape is still there. So, which is nice. Um, still love it. It is just, it's beautiful because it does give a glow. Um, the, naming it Healthy Winter Glow, it does give you that beautiful frostbitten glow, like, 
rosy cheeks um, and it looks good on my skin tone so I love it um, and then I also have the primer which I love so if you have like a super matte um, foundation and you need a glowy primer this is fantastic and I have that in the deeper shade light copper it came in three shades um, you probably won't be able to find it I think it was like limited edition I probably should have bought a backup but um, yeah, I still love it. Let's keep going. All right, next to talk about from Chanel is their lipsticks. Um, they had come out with a whole collection. It was a Rouge Allure, but it was a Nuit Blanche. Um, so White Night. So what was cool about it is, of course, the packaging. Normally they have a black packaging, so it was beautiful to see this white packaging with black accents. So the packaging... Is fantastic it always has that pop-up action so just packaging wise it was cool to get it in a different type of packaging um, I had gotten four shades um, and they do it by timestamps by times on the clock so one o'clock three o'clock four o'clock and six o'clock those were the shades that I bought um, I got four um, they might have had like eight shades. <laughs> they, they had at least six to eight shades. Um, so I bought four. Um, I love all four. I love all four and I have a whole video dedicated to all four shades, but I'll tell you what has been my personal fave and it has been shade number four. Um, it just, as a brown girl, this has just been like the perfect pinky berry, um, nude lipstick. Um, and you're gonna see this has been the shade that <laughs> this type of shade i've been actually really loving this year i have another shade from another brand you'll see that is quite similar to this so clearly i have a type this year um but i just love i love the formula love the packaging love chanel what can i say they knocked it out of the park with this collection talking about smash hits from chanel have to talk about these trios. Um, so this is from the Le Beige Cal um, collection, the Healthy Glow Sun Kiss Powders, and I have the shades Deep Rose Gold and Deep Mauve. I have dedicated videos to both, so please check that out. I had first started with the Deep Mauve, and I was just so impressed, particularly about pigmentation. You know, as someone of deeper skin tone, we're always worried will the luxury brands like Chanel cater to us, give us sh shades that have enough depth for us. Yeah, I, I showed you in all the videos. These two shades right here are so pigmented. This is such a pigmented blush. Beautiful deep berry blush, love it. This, I have to call it a contour, it's more of a contour than the bronzer. This is deep this is deep, which I love. You know, the fact that I have to hold back on any product, I actually appreciate. Um, so I love this. Um, this shade right here, um, I kind of think of it almost more of a blush topper than even a, um, a highlighter, but I love it and I loved it mixed uh, with this. So this trio I love. And so I loved it so much, I had to then go for the deep rose gold. Love it as well. This blush, I actually have it on my cheeks now. Love this blush. Love this bronzer. Also have that on my face now. This is a great bronzer. Um, the highlighter, um, you know what? It's truly more, I think they describe it really as a luminizer rather than a highlighter. So I will say it is not, it gives a very natural glow, um, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have a lot of shine or sparkle to it. Um, not, not that I want anything glittery or anything, but it's more of a luminizer like powder rather than a true highlighter um but it's still lovely um but i particularly you know love using these two in particular um and less less so of the highlighter because like i said it's more of a luminizing powder which is not a bad thing but um i still end up having to um you know, go to other traditional highlighters, I feel. Um, and what I love about these two is, as you can imagine, these are great for travel. I have traveled with these and they work. Obviously, I use them all the time here at home, um, but they're great for travel. They have beautiful tones, beautiful formula, and they are brown girl friendly. Now for their spring collection, um, I'm not gonna talk about um, eyeshadows. <laughs> 
I'm going to talk about a nail polish. Uh, this is a nail polish Lagoon. I love Chanel nail polishes. And this shade right here is gorgeous. It's a gorgeous blue and it's not flat. It has, it's not glittery, but it has a luminosity, a shine to it. It's, it's gorgeous. This is a gorgeous shade. Um, I did buy the coral eyeshadow and it's lovely. I've used it several times and I do like it. Um, but I don't want to, I, I can't act like it's the best eyeshadow palette ever. Um, Chanel just in general. Um, I have eyeshadow palettes from them that I do like, but I can never say like Chanel, that is what they're known for. Um, they had, you know, another eyeshadow palette that had a blue in it, which I did not get, so I can't comment on that, um, just because I wasn't sure if the brown in that palette would work for me. So I, I forego the eyeshadow palettes, but that nail polish, is gorgeous. Um, and lastly, I want to talk about their mascaras, their colored mascaras. Um, it is in the Rouge Noir um, formula. It's, you know, the ones that have the pop-up. And so I got two shades. Um, you know, the pop the popular one was definitely the, the lavender, and that's the first one I got. And it's just a fun color. Um, so I got that, and then I also got, I know not many people were talking about so much about this one, the orange. I actually have actually enjoyed this, and it's more of like a brick orange. Um, so it's actually beautiful. It's not too flashy or crazy or anything. Because I love to use colored um, mascaras, particularly on my lower lash line. So I've actually been enjoying both of these. Um, I already own the red one from them that was from last year. I've, I've used their black ones um, also in the past. So I do like this one, but I particularly like um, the colors and uh, hopefully they continue to come out with some fun colors because I think that's actually great. So those are my faves from Chanel this year. Um, there are some new Chanel items that I saw that are coming out um, that I will be partaking in. I do plan to get those new eyeliners and you know, we'll see what else I get from Chanel. So that is for Chanel. Now let's go to Prada. Okay, next major brand I gotta talk about is Prada. Um, this is a brand that has been really new to me this year, but has come out strong for me. So first we gotta talk about the foundation. That was a great way to start off the year. I have enjoyed this foundation still. Um, I have it in the shade DW80. This has been a go-to one for me, particularly to wear to work, because I love to have a foundation that's medium to full that can last, you know, 12 hour shifts. And, and uh, you know, this holds up so well, gives great coverage. Um, I, I, I love the finish um, of this. Um, you know, it's like a natural matte, so I, I've been truly enjoying this foundation. Um, I had all intentions when this first year started to say that this is my favorite foundation, but there is actually one other foundation that I will be talking about. You'll be probably surprised um, that I'll be telling you is my fave, but this uh, still, I actually been truly loving it. And um, yeah, I use this every week. There's not a week that I don't use this foundation. Um, next, I have to talk about lipsticks lipsticks now when it comes to the matte formula i own four shades and once again guys i have dedicated videos for these so i have a dedicated video for the foundation and i have a dedicated video for the lipsticks so i own four um of the lipsticks now three of them are the hyper mattes um and then um, one is the soft matte I'm, I'm just pulling out one just to tell you my favorite shade but honestly i love all four shades I use them like, probably should have pulled out the purple. The first one I ever bought was the ultraviolet purple. It is such a deep, beautiful color. I should bring that. I, I would I would actually call that a fave. But I brought this one out, Tonka, because this is my most used shade. Now I left the Chanel swatch on my arm just because I have to say these two shades are very similar. I clearly have a type. They're not exactly the same, but clearly I've been really into these kind of mauve berry lipstick colors this year. Um, so this one, I have definitely been using this. This might be my favorite lipstick formula, favorite matte lipstick formula. I love the Prada lipstick formula. Hands down, hands down. Now besides the matte lipsticks, I got into, I bought a lip balm. And I know, the price is crazy for a lip balm. It really is, it truly is. 
but I'm not gonna lie, I love it. And once again, you know, uh, this is the deepest shade, um, I think it was mahogany. I'll swap it for you too, so you can kind of see, you know, it's in that same family. Um, I, I, because obviously you can see depth wise, it's much sheer, sheer than the others because it's a lip balm. It's not, it's a tinted lip balm. It's not an actual lipstick, but it is so nourishing. It feels so good. Um, and you know, and all these lipsticks are refillable. So in the future, you know, I would just buy just the refillable and, you know, and I can keep the case save a few dollars on the refill um but yeah prada lipstick prada foundation is on point and just like chanel i do own a prada eyeshadow palette that i bought this year um you'll see i'm not mentioning it here because i'm not going to put in my faves and once again, not because I hate it, it's not a bad, and it's a fun color story. Um, it's just formula-wise, I have eyeshadow formulas that I enjoy more. Um, you know, the big thing for me is each of them all have, you know, the pop of color. I love a neutral with a pop of color. But the pop of colors in, in these palettes are all soft mattes. Um, and I'm sure, you know, for people who fear color, um, you know, I'm sure they really appreciate that it is this, you know, very soft um, pigmentation but obviously I love some color I do not fear color and so that proper color I do wish it was more pigmented I, I wish I didn't have to work so hard to build up the color um, so for me that part was just a, a little bit of a letdown and that's a personal preference issue um, not a horrible palette just you know not necessarily my cup of tea I wouldn't call it my not bad not a fail but I wouldn't call it a favorite you know what, so since I told you that Prada was, I thought was gonna be my favorite foundation of the year, and I love the Prada foundation because I just I obviously talked about it, but I said something, actually there might be another foundation that might beat it for me for this year. And it's not a luxury brand. It's a viral brand though. <laughs> it's the Tear Tear. I'm telling you, I'm not paid. I, I know it's going viral everywhere. I bought this out of my own money. N none of these things. I didn't get PR for anything that you're about to see, okay? I rarely get PR, and it's not for these items. Trust me. Um, I bought this on my own. I love this. I I absolutely love And for those who watched the video, I finally figured out how to get rid of the plastic, so the mirror is good. Because at the time, I was having trouble pulling off the plastic. I was like, man, this mirror sucks. It wasn't the mirror, it was me. Um, so I'll just opening it back up. At the time that I was um, posting this video, it was the Deeper Shade um, 43N um, Deep Cocoa. It, there are now two deeper shades and they're supposed, the best news is, they're supposed to be coming out with 10 more shades. And so hopefully on that one, there'll be some more deeper shades. I appreciate that. Like it feels like every other month they're expanding and bringing out more shades. Um, so they're working on getting deep, deeper shades because they're getting there, but there's definitely some shades are still missing, particularly in the deeper category, which hopefully they should fill in those slots because I love this formula. This is my first time having a cushion foundation because honestly, never had, a, never seen a cushion foundation that actually had my shade. This is the first time that I could find something in my shade. I now understand the hype. It is beautiful. It is so light. It feels like nothing, yet it still provides fantastic coverage. It makes me think of like the Dior, the discontinued air flash foundation. If you watch my favorites um, foundation video, I put that in there and it was kind of messed up to put in a discontinued foundation, but I had to admit what was one of my favorite foundations. This gives me that kind of vibe, um, just, you know, just in a different formulation, but I have to admit it. I know it's viral, blah, blah, blah. I'm not doing it because it's viral. I legitimately love this and I'll be taking this to travel with me. I think this is also will be great to travel um, with. So yeah, I gotta admit it. This is actually my favorite foundation so far in 2024. Okay. And I know I said I wasn't gonna go quote unquote by, by categories of uh, different makeups, but since we're on the complexion, um, I have one item from this brand and that is Makeup by Mario. 
And this is my first time buying any products from Makeup by Mario. Um, this is the Soft Sculpt Bronzing and Shaping Serum, and it's in the deepest shade, Dark Deep. I've actually been liking this. You know what? I wasn't sure. You know, honestly, when um, I first did my video with you guys, you know, you know, I, I knew I liked it, but you know, I'm still kind of, kind of seeing how much I liked it because, to be honest. It's not the most pigmented, and the fact that this is the deepest shade that this I you know that it makes me a little sad because then that means people who are deeper than me don't have a shade. Just saying. Unfortunately, I'm usually am the deepest shade for most makeup items if I'm lucky. Um, it's different, but I like that it's different. Um, so yeah. It's not as pigmented as I'm used to. For, you know, I use a lot of cream um, contour and bronzers. Um, this is liquid. Um, and it's so different. You know, the application, it comes with a pump, but I actually like to use um, this applicator. And I apply it directly. And I actually used it today. I did use a powder bronzer over it. But I initially did use this. Um, I tend to use this a lot when I'm doing light makeup looks, um, but I even used it today under my makeup for my full glam look today. I actually really like it. It, it blends beautifully. You know, like I said, it, I can make a very natural look and it'll still give me some dimension. Um, I like to have something different. You know, I'm so used to powder and cream bronzers. It's actually nice to have something in liquid form. So I actually have been enjoying this. Like I said, I, I, I know I said I was going to go by brands, and I kind of am, but I am still kind of going by categories. So since we're talking about bronzers, I figure I would talk about why I sell. It's the only item I have from this brand, and it is their bronzer. And this was another item. I wasn't sure if I would actually talk about this item for a phase. I really wasn't. I wasn't even overly, overly impressed by this because it's not that deep. And the fact that this is the deepest shade, as always, I'm always the deepest shade, shade number five. You know, obviously I was in love with the packaging. Um, and here is the product, you know, and I have been using this. I did not think I would put this in my faves because I was like, mm, they could have definitely gone way deeper than this. Definitely, definitely. But... I have come to appreciate doing light makeup looks. And that's the one thing I have to say about this year. You know, like I said, maybe it's because, you know, now I'm in my 40s. You know, I, I know I'm going full glam today, but I actually do appreciate doing no makeup makeup looks, light makeup looks. And so there is actually a time and place for this. And so if I'm doing a lighter makeup look, it does show up enough that it works. And it's nice for that. Um, so I don't, I'm not necessarily going towards this when I'm doing, um, you know, a full glam look. But when I'm doing a soft makeup look, I actually do like it. It's actually, it's actually, it's actually not. I, I thought, I, I was ready to hate on it, but I actually have found myself using it um, more than I thought I would. So I think there's a time and place. Should they have gone deeper? Yes. Yes. But I have found a way to make it work for my makeup routine. I have to admit it. Continuing with the bronzers, Giorgio Armani. Now, Armani Beauty, this got some depth to it. Not to say you can't go deeper, because I do know, um, in the, I, I do have friends who are deeper than me who do need a deeper shade than this. So, so Armani Beauty definitely still go deeper. But this has more pigmentation still comparative to the YSL. Um, so once again, as always, I'm the deepest shade. Um, so I'm number 120. So it's a luminous silk bronzing powder. And you get a lot of product, and it's beautiful, and it has a beautiful finish. You know, it's a luminous, it's luminous without being, there's no sparkles, it's not metallic -y, it's no crazy sparkly products, but it gives a glow, but still gives some depth. It still gives me that bronze action. It's beautiful. It is gorgeous. So I have actually been enjoying this a lot. A lot so this is great now sticking with brand I'll mention one other item from Armani beauty and that is luminous silk the cheek tint I have one shade and who knows maybe I'll get another but for right now um, what did I get number 65 which I think is like the berry um, 
I think it's like intense berry. Um, this is beautiful. Once again, try something different, you know. Um, generally speaking, you know, I'm still a powder blush girl. It's not something I use all the time, but once again, I'm getting into doing softer looks, and I think it's, you know, this, I'll just swipe. Once again, you could kind of see a pattern. I clearly like um, berry shades, but this is beautiful. It's very soft and light. It is a cheap tint, okay? But it's beautiful. It really is. It truly is beautiful. I think I might as well just swatch the Mario for you. So here is the Mario. All right, let's keep it moving. Okay, next brand we're gonna talk about, Dior. Gotta talk, we can't be talking about luxury makeup and not talk about Dior. So what are we gonna start with? I'm gonna start with their maximizers, their Forever Glow maximizers. Now, if you watch my video, I did a video where at that time I only had samples. I had samples of rosy, gold, and bronze. I was clearly enjoying them all. And I was telling you guys, hey, you know, I think I'm gonna end up buying full bottles. You can even let me know what you think. Um, I went in store to get to swatch them all because I, I wanted to swatch, particularly another shade called Peachy. I definitely wanted to try them all. So what did I end up picking? I did pick up the Rosie, which I had samples for, but I also went and got Peachy. I went on the limb just because from the swatches, um, from, you know, I, I saw it on other people like my good friend Enamored Beauty. It looked be beautiful on her. So I went ahead and just went and bought it. And it's actually, I have the Peachy on my cheeks today. And you can see why I love it. It gives this glow with, from within, this glassy glow. It's gorgeous. No, no particles or any crazy sparkles, but it's just gorgeous. And so, yeah, you see the theme, like, you're noticing, like, I'm, there is a lot more, as I know I'm going full glam. I know I went with a bold eye look today. I get it. I'm testing out some new makeup, and I love to have fun. I love color. I'm not going to... I'm not gonna lose that essence of me that, that loves makeup. But one thing I have been noticing in general, and I know it's not being displayed today, but about softer makeup. And I do find myself like, here I am, you know, not the bling bling highlighters of, of the old, but then doing these more glow from within highlighters. You saw the cheek tints. You're seeing the, the Mario, that's off. So you're gonna notice as we go along, there is, I still have some highly pigmented makeup here, but there is an undercurrent of soft makeup, the soft bronzer. So there, there is a theme I'm noticing with the pattern of my new makeup style and what the makeup trends are right now. But let's keep going with Dior. What else did I buy from Dior that I'm so in love with? Next, we're gonna talk about the shade Bronze Glow. I'm saying the shade because I have it both in the lip oil and the blush, love them both. Love them both. Neither of these are new formulas to me. I own several lip glows. Well, actually, I, previous to this in Dior, I only owned Mahogany. I did also buy this year the Lilac one. I'm not featuring it today, not because it's bad, but to be honest, it doesn't have that much color, not much pop to it. I actually prefer the Bronze Glow. Um, not just, it's a lip oil, so it's not like it's, these are super pigmented colors, but this just, just looks, I, I don't know, it pops more on my lips, on my skin tone. This is just better for me. Um, this blush has to be at least my fourth blush, <laughs> but this color is so pretty. Let me open it up. Um, and so this provides such a natural glow. So once again, if I'm doing a light makeup look, this is like a go-to. And sometimes I will take this and just sweep it in my um, eyes. If I'm not, you know, and I'm a rush and I don't have time to do a full eye look. I will just sweep this all throughout my crease and just put some mascara, have this on my cheeks, we're good to go. Add this lip oil, we are good to go. So bronze glow, if you, I think this will work for everybody, but particularly if you are my skin tone, these, this combo right here, I'm telling you. And also if you know me, I am an addict for the Dior Addict Lip Shine. Um, I have several of these, different cases, different shades, um, but I did buy two more this year. I bought the two of the newer cases. They were going for this like pinky lavender color 
theme. With that being said, let's see. I have this one, which was Dior Lilac, which is probably the, the most popular this year. So I got this shade, which is gorgeous. Um, Lilac just seems to be a, just a very popular shade in general for this year. Um, and then I got, uh, I think it's Dior Mitza, which is more of a nude, natural nude. I've been using this one a lot. Um, so I've been enjoying both of these. Um, I already, I've already have loved the formula, so that wasn't anything new. It was just new shade, new cases, um, to try. I could swatch this. I don't know how much this is, you know, it's a lip oil, so these are fairly clear, but, but just know it's just a natural shade that looks just beautiful on my lips, on my skin tone. So that's it for Dior. Let's move on to the We're next talking one. about lip oils. Let's talk about Guerlain. This is the only item I have from Guerlain so far for this year. Um, and this is not new to, um, I think these actually, these came out, I think, last year, actually. They're just new to me. They're expensive, and I was finally willing to uh, pay for it. I think I, I think I used some points or something, so I didn't even pay for it, or not full price. Um, I got in the shade Pop Rose Glow. So yeah, the, you have seen it. Lip oils are everywhere. And I'm, I'm f totally down that train. I have been loving lip oils. I have, I have a lot of lip oils from a lot of different brands. Um, so I decided to get a pink because I didn't really have this kind of shade. This shade, I don't know if you're gonna be able to appreciate it as an arm swatch, um, but on my lips, it pops. I put this on, my, it pops. It's beautiful, it's a great formula. I love it. I would consider getting other shades. You know, lip oils, you don't need to buy too many. Um, you know, they all have their distinctive shades, but in the end, they're pretty sheer. So it's not one where you need to get every single shade. Um, you know, and they're expensive. So, um, you know, I might consider maybe getting one more, but it's kind of one, you know, these are ones where you only need one, two or three at the max, you know. But if you haven't tried their formula, I would highly uh, recommend it. I love it. If you're interested in lip oil, Guerlain is definitely one to try. I actually have one more item from Guerlain. I was thinking I only had one item. No, no, no. I got another lipstick from Guerlain. So we did the lip oil, but now we have a true matte lipstick. But obviously, the case. <laughs> this case is gorgeous. It, it is such a gorgeous, gorgeous case. Oh my God. So obviously, it was probably influenced by the case, but I also just love this color. It's called Tonka. Yes, I know. I have a Prada lipstick up here called Tonka, but totally different shade. It's more of a peachy nude. I love it. Um, I put a little bit on right now. I have another lipstick, but I did top a little bit on my lips currently. Love the shade. It's a beautiful formula. The case, obviously, is everything. So yes, Gala has my heart this year when it comes to lip oils and lips. Let's keep going with lipsticks. Um, I have a couple of brands where I just bought just a lipstick. So let's just go through them. So this next one is a new to me. It's not new to 2024. I was debating even talking about it, but I just want to reflect on all my faves from this year. This is something that honestly, the brand came out like four years ago. Um, this shade, I think, maybe came out last year. So there's definitely nothing new about it, except it's new to me. Carolina Herrera. Carolina Herrera. Obviously, packaging. I, I think I did a shorts dedicated to this to you guys, but I didn't do a dedicated video reviewing it. Um, so you can see how you put it all together. Obviously, packaging is everything. It's very light. Guys, it's very light, um, you know, so for luxury brands, it's not, it doesn't give you that heavy luxe feel, but it gives you the look. Um, the tassel, so extra. I debated even getting it because I knew practicality speaking, what, who needs the, the tassel, but it, it's just cute. What can I say? Um, you know, it's detachable. So a lot of times, actually, when I go out with it, when, I, um, when I'm on about, I actually leave the tassel home with me at home. I will tell you, I'll tell you a quick story. I had gone, when I first part, purchased this, you know, so excited to take it out and try it out. I took it with me to my kids flag football game. So I was watching my kids play and I was getting all into it. Now I thought it'd be cute instead of putting it inside the bag, I had it kind of hooked 
outside of the bag on the side, you know, so you could see the full, you know, look on the outside. Well, I was so into my kids game, obviously, you know, I root for my kids with all my heart. So I was running down up and down as my son was scoring touches. I'm running down the field, screaming his name. Yeah. Yeah. And this would fall off. <laughs> now I have to tell you, uh, in general, this is pretty secure. This is generally pretty secure, but not if you're going to be going running. So this was like falling off. Yeah. So, um, in general, anyway, it's pretty secure. Like I can shake it. It's not falling off the magnetic holds, but you know, if you're going to do vigorous activity, this isn't the lipstick to bring around, but I, I think that should be obvious. It was just me, stupid me. Um, so generally speaking, I leave this home with me. Um, just the, the tassel part and I just take this part and I keep my lipstick in my bag, not on the outside. Um, but I love the case and I actually do love this shade. Um, I'll list over here the name of the shade I'm forgetting off the top of my head, but it's got that berryness. And that's actually what I have on now. I put this first and then I put um, the Guerlain on top. Clearly, uh, there's a, a, a theme of shades that I've been into this year. You know, previous years, I was all into browns, browns, browns. I was buying every shade of deep browns, nude browns, cool tone browns. This year seems to be a berry mauve year. It's just, it is what That's it is. Gucci. My one item from Gucci, they had come out with some new shades. I'm very familiar from uh, with the this formula. It's actually in my top three favorite matte lipstick formulas. But the shade is Ava Grape, and it's just a gorgeous shade. So, like I said, clearly I have a thing for mauve tones. It's a nice nudie kind of a tone. Um, it's gorgeous. What can I say? I got Suku, and surprisingly, I only have one item from Suku, which is so different. Um, if you have been watching me last year, I had so many videos on Suku last year. The last few years, Suku was a brand that I was buying regularly. This year, this is the only item I have to talk about. Um, and I just, it's actually more just, I haven't really been purchasing Suku that much. I normally purchase them for their eyeshadows. Um, and I know their style of eyeshadow, it's a you know, it's a Japanese brand, so, you know, I know everything's going to be soft, but I just feel like the color stories this year have been even more fair, more softer, and I just have felt like, I just didn't feel as confident that they would work on my skin tone, and they just weren't calling to me, honestly. Um, so I don't have eyeshadows to talk about with Suku, which is very weird. But one item I do have is their lipstick. It is a new formula for them, the Moisture Glaze Lipstick. I have it in one shade, but honestly, I probably should have bought two. But I bought it in the Fun Purple shade. Um, and it was like, it was like going out, like, sorry, I'm like running out of space to put it. But it is just, it's kind of like in the Dior Lip Addict Shine kind of formula. You know, everybody's doing these as well, where it's kind of like a lip gloss, lip balm, lipstick combo thing on a stick kind of thing, you know. Um, fantastic formula, feels fantastic. It's a beautiful shade. Um, I thought purple was just fun and unique to my collection. Um, I probably could have, should have bought one of the brown tone shades, but I, I also have other shades from other brands. So that's what kind of held me back. But just as a formula, I highly recommend this. So if there's a shade that you like, especially this purple shade, I, I feel like not many people have this type of shade. Everybody seems to have browns and nudie pinks, but nobody has like purple. Um, so Suku definitely wins for that. Okay, next we got Lisa Eldridge. Um, since we're doing lips, I'll start with their lips, but I have more items in this lipstick. So this is a brand where I have couple of categories to talk about but let's talk about it. they also came out with new lipstick formula once again this has been a big thing i feel like every brand now is either coming out with a lip oil or one of these kind of lip gloss on a stick kind of hybrid kind of lipstick so i have two shades i have metropolis and sweet fig metropolis was my initial fave you can understand on my brown skin how a shade like that, how much I would love a shade such as this. Um, Sweet Fig has grown on me because initially when I first put it on, it was beautiful, but it was just so close to my skin tone that it almost, you know, it was just kind of like, okay. like But 
take this shade, Sweet Fig, and this is for anyone of my skin tone, because, you know, for those who have a lighter skin tone, it by itself, I'm sure it looks fabulous on you. But if you pair it with my now new favorite lip liner, Lisa Eldridge came out with lip, lip pencils. She had lip liners before, which were nice, but then she came out with these new Sculpt and Shade lip pencils, and she came out with the shade 3N. I'm going to put it right next to it. How gorgeous is this? So, um, this was the tone that I was hoping for when she initially did her lip liners because she didn't have a brown like this. She didn't have a, the, a deep brown liner like this. 3N, so first off, I did use it today, and it's just a liner that I use all the time with all my lipsticks. It doesn't matter what brand. Um, now, you pair this lip liner with the Sweet Fig. That amplifies the Sweet Fig, and it's actually gorgeous. Um, so I'm loving this new formula because once again, if you love a dewer attic lip shine, that kind of thing, you're going to love uh, this new Lisa Elger formula. This lip liner is fabulous. Love it. Another item I have to talk about, eyeliner. I'm someone who loves an eyeliner. I love doing a wing and I used it today. It's been my go-to liner. It has been my go-to wing liner. This is a fabulous formula. I will repurchase. This is actually great. Um, I had also bought the mascara. It's nice. I have nothing bad to say, but at the same time, will I necessarily buy it again? You know, there's so many great mascara formulas out there. It didn't wow me. I didn't hate it, used it, but you know, but this liner, this liquid liner, I would repurchase. And lastly, I have to talk about, I almost dropped it, her skin tint. Her Seamless Skin Enhancing Skin Tint. I got in the shade T13. Love it. Love it. This is a gorgeous skin tint. A lot of people are coming out with skin tints. This is one of my favorite formulas for skin tint out there. It's, it's not too glowy, a lot of skin tint. And I have dry skin, so not to say I don't appreciate a glowy, moisturizing skin tint, but... Um, most skin tints are very serumy, very glowy, very wet. Um, this is not. This is a skin tint that gives you that light coverage, um, but it's not like super, super glowy. It sets itself. I still like to put powder for everything, but honestly, it sets itself. You don't need powder with this, um, generally speaking. Um, and what's great about it is like, you know, when I'm doing no makeup, makeup look, I'll use this. But I have then, like if later in the day I want to amp up and do my makeup, I can then add some concealer and do my full glam and I can build up from here. You know, it's like coverage, but like, I don't know. I, I just really like this formula for skin tint. This is one of the best skin tint formulas I feel that are out there. Let's switch from lip liners to liquid eyeliners. So, um, I just told you Lisa Eldridge is my favorite black eyeliner. That is my favorite. It's my go-to. It is what it is. But Dolce Gabbana also came up with liquid liners. Um, and this is my first purchase from Dolce Gabbana. I've never bought any makeup from them before. Um, I bought it in three shades. I think I initially started with two and then bought a third one later afterwards. Um, but I have, you know, green, blue, purple. But the shade, I will tell you, they go by number. 04, uh, 05, and 06. <laughs> 456. Um, they have a lot of different colors. I love these. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Just straight up as a liquid eyeliner formula, I'm not going to say that this is just the, it is the best liquid liner formula. I'm not going to say that. But the reason why I love it, besides the cool, funky packaging, is the cool, funky colors. Now, you might not be a color person, and so, hey, you know, you can skip on this, but Obviously, I like colors. I love colored eyeliners, whether they're pencils or liquid liners. I love them, and they have a lot of fun colors. Um, so with that being said, I wouldn't say to buy, like buy it for their black or brown um, because I don't think the formula is that great that it's worth paying so much money for a liquid liner. But if there is a shade that they have that you're interested in and it's one of these unique colors that you can't find in other brands, then it's worth getting it. So for me, I would get it for fun color, not for black or brown, because that just seems silly to me. It's not that great. Other thing I would recommend, shake first. Shake first, that's something I learned too, because at first I was like questioning how good they were and then I wasn't shaking it. So there is the 
a fun green color. They have like a couple of greens, a couple of blues. They got purples, you know. Here's the blue. And here is the purple. And they're just fun colors. And I've just been having a lot of fun with these. So if you see fun color, get them. Have some fun. Continuing on with fun liners, um, I'll mention Violet FR. Um, it's a brand that I'm sure most of you haven't heard from. Um, she is a Parisian makeup artist. Um, and I got uh, the brand is called Zieu Paint. And I have it in the color, I think it's like Dieu Bleu, I think. Yeah, Dieu Bleu. I bought it because obviously this is such a unique blue shade. I've never seen anybody have a blue this color. I mean, that's crazy. Who has a blue that color? Nobody. Nobody has a blue that color. Now, that this blue might scare you. They have other colors, more muted blue, deeper blues, and obviously other colors besides blue. So you can find a color that is not crazy like this but I bought this because I wanted something that was just so blue is my favorite color and then it's just a color that nobody else has nobody has a blue like this blue not this blue um I think it's fantastic and fun to use as liquid liner I don't like it all over the lid I have a dedicated video to it you're supposed to be also be able to use it you know like all over the lid for me personally I think that was a fail but you know, taking a brush, an angle brush, and using a liquid liner, that I think is fun and it's worth it for that purpose only, in my opinion. Next brand, let's talk Fenty. I bought several items, but I'm gonna bring up two items in particular from Fenty this year that I have really enjoyed. The highlighter. You know, I almost debated, I'm like, do I need any more highlighters? And to be honest, this year, I have not been wearing highlighters much as I have in previous years. You know, five, 10 years ago, I couldn't do a look without a highlighter. And this year I have actually found myself, several days I would just not wear highlighter. I haven't been as big into highlighter. I'm starting to come back around to highlighter. But the one thing I will say about highlighters now is that it's more about that inner glow kind of look, not being super sparkly. When you think of Fenty's, the original Fenty um, highlighters, they were super glittery, super sparkly. And I loved them. I was. In that moment, that was the trend. Um, but now they're following the trend where it's about having a softer, smoother formula. This is so smooth. Oh, this is so smooth. So smooth. I have the shade in Yum Rum. I have another one, Rich Honey. Um, Rich Honey, I love too, but Yum Rum, just, it just pops on my skin tone. It just, I know it looks super light, but I'm telling you, I mean, for my... I love it. Um, they have much deeper tones than this one, but for me, I just love how this pops on my skin tone. Um, obviously, this is a heavy swatch, but you know, kind of like the peachy shade here, you know? Um, so I think it is a fantastic formula. So if you see a shade of this, that's great. Um, and I've also been enjoying her concealer. We're, um, we're even concealer, and I have in the shade, I think it's 390C. Um, so I've been enjoying this. It's the hydrating formula. Um, I think I've mentioned this before, but um, I had tried her original concealer years ago, hated it, gave it away, returned it. But this one I have been enjoying, and especially when I'm doing a light makeup look, um, I've been loving when I'm going for a glowy look. I, it's not like super glowy, it's not crazy, but it's hydrating, it feels great, and it gives great coverage. So I've actually been enjoying that. If you'd like to see the applicator, it's interesting. It's got a nice angle. Let me show you the shade. So this is 390C. Um, so yeah, I've been enjoying that. My foundation shade, by the way, in Fenty is 410, if you're curious. So this is 390C as a concealer shade. Oh, I know. I have a lot of faves. I've bought a lot of makeup. Oh my God. All right. We're getting there. We're almost done. I promise you. We're almost done. Powder. Setting powder. Huda Beauty, um, I got in the peach pie. This was a new shade for her. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. You know, after last year, I was loving the, I still love, one size is ultra pink. That was a big thing, like can black people wear pink? Setting powder, proved you last year. It was true, so then I was like, well, peach, sure. So I wasn't afraid. If I could wear pink, <laughs> pink was scary and it worked out. Doing peach, uh, let's see if I can like, I don't know if I get it's a powder so like how can I swatch this but 
it actually works. It actually looks beautiful. I love it under eye. It's a great formula. It is highly fragranced. Highly, highly fragranced. So if you're a person who doesn't like fragrance, Huda Beauty as a brand, not for you. Also, I think, did she come out with an unscented version finally? Another thing she came out with the perfume of the scent. Um, I'm not bothered by scents, so I don't care. But for anybody who has problems with scents, this is like the most scented powder you'll like ever find. But the formula is fabulous. Formula is fabulous. And I, I actually do like these shades. I actually like that brands are coming out. Even one size has come out with some peach shades and like came it in like three, um, like a light, medium, and deep peach shade. Like I'm almost tempted to get it, but I was like, I have so much powder to get through. Um, but yeah, like peach, honestly, girls, if you guys and girls, if you are of my skin tone, don't be scared to try the pink and peach. You'd be amazed actually how, how it's actually good. It actually provides some brightening. Um, I've actually been enjoying it more than doing the traditional yellow powders and that's me. And it also depends on your undertone, obviously. Um, I think the more neutral you are, the, the more you can get away with these kinds of shades. All right, almost done. Let's keep pushing. Talking about powders, I thought I'd bring this up. Although, on the other hand, these are not new to 2024, so I don't know if I should bother talking about it, but I will briefly mention it. I did make a video about it. The Givenchy powders. Prisme Libre. These aren't new. They were just new to me. Love it. I'll make it quick. Uh, for the uh, setting powder, I have it... It's, I think it's like the deepest shade. I'm always the deepest shade for everything. Um, number five for the powder. Love it. I That's what I use today. I use it on, under eyes today. I use this powder. And then for the cheeks, uh, I got shades both five and six. So one is more corally. One is more pinky berry. Love these. It's just a lovely formula. To have a loose powder as blush, it is beautiful. It, they're still pigmented, but it, there's still a softness to it. Um, they're just, these are just so finely milled. The application is beautiful. So um, yeah, these are great setting powder and blushes. Love them both. Okay. We've come to eyeshadows. I, I know I didn't, I said we're doing everything brand, but in the end, I always talk about eyeshadows last. And in this category, I only have one eyeshadow per brand, and that was the only thing that's, to talk about them with them. So it still works out. Still brand and still category. This is gonna be quick. Normally, normally, favorite videos for me is all in consuming about eyeshadows. And I, it's not gonna happen today. This is gonna be short and sweet. I don't actually have much to talk about. It's crazy. It's crazy in terms of new eyeshadow um, formulas. And um, one I featured, but the rest I have not because to be honest, um, if you want to know in terms of my favorite eyeshadow palettes, generally speaking, it's not coming from luxury brands. I love luxury brands for their lipsticks and f complexion products, um, blushes, you know, but luxury are not necessarily the, usually not the best for eyeshadow formulas, to be honest. A lot of times I go indie. But I do have one luxury brand to talk luxury about. brand that I did do a, f a video on. Um, it was early in the years Tom Ford. Um, and it is the iconic smoke palette. And, you know, it's been a while since I bought Tom Ford. Um, you know, I've always loved their original wet dry formula. And then after a while, I feel like they kind of fell off. A lot of their palettes were uninteresting, no more interesting color stories. Um, it's just a formula. I don't know. I just felt like they fell off. But this one, Iconic Smoke, I have to mention it. Um, obviously, it, you know, I love it for the color story. This is, I love smoky eye look. I love blues. I love gray. So this is my kind of color story. Um, but what I appreciate is actually having a formula that's different. Um, you know, it was a different formula for them and formula for me. So it was this creme formula. And, and I know they had come out with a creme formula before, but even for them, I feel like, from all of her, no, I've tried their other formula. This was different from the other crime formula. So it wasn't even saying, this is so putty-like, this this shade in particular. What a gorgeous shade. Um, so this one in particular is putty. The rest are not as putty. This is more powdery here. Um, but it's just, it's just gorgeous. Um, light shade here. And then the shimmer. Now the shimmer is very subtle. 
it, it's a nice sheen. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. But it's not like that super sparkly ones that you expect from the wet dry. But I just appreciated that the formula, I just felt it was unique. Different from anything else that I've tried. And it's a nice color story. So that was my one luxury eyeshadow formula that I've been truly enjoying this year. I haven't been using it as much because now we're in spring and summer, but it's a great palette for winter times. Um, I, like I said, I think these brands are ones that I have not featured in. Isom, and this is a new brand to me. I have to say, this this is literally what I, you might have seen a short on. This is in my top five matte formula period formulas period it's not even just about this particular one this is their newest palette it's my first palette but it's also the newest one that came this year is a harmony palette i decided to go for it because i've always heard how good their formula is and i felt like this was just a unique color story for me i, I tend to do a lot of blues purples greens and grays and neutrals and i don't do a lot of orange pink especially not anymore um, but especially now that it's spring, summertime, I, I thought it was a great time to get it. It came out in the spring and I'm still using it in the summer. Loving it. Not only for the color story, but because the formula. The formula is so good. It is such a good matte formula. So they have other color stories besides this. So if you find another color story that you like, they have a lot of neutrals. Um, I, I was so tempted to buy more. I, the only reason I didn't buy any more just because the other color stories I felt like I had similar in Viseart. And it's very reminiscent to me. And so if I already have Invisiart, it didn't make sense to have it also in the East. And so I wanted a color story that was unique. But yes, formula-wise, old or new palette, try some Esum. They're good. And they have sales all the time. So wait for a good sale. Next, this is probably my favorite palette all year. All year. And this I know I haven't been featured. It's an indie brand. I normally do luxury. This is a Depth Cosmetic and it's the Flying Fiddles. Now this brand, as an indie brand, they are known usually for some wild, crazy, sparkly color stories. This is a neutral, which this might still like scare some people, but for them, this is a <laughs> toned down from them. Um, this is great. This is that whole neutral with the pop of color because that's totally me. Um, this is fantastic. You have your, your browns and mauves, you know, for your neutral, um, mattes, you've got fantastic shimmers. I've been using this all time. Their matte formula, shimmer form, it's just great. This is my favorite palette, period, for this year. It's probably now my favorite Adept formula. I'm, I did a, I did a rankings video and I named it two. I'm still not sure if I should call it one or two, but I didn't want to name it one at that time because it was just way too early for me to give it an automatic top spot the first day I had it. But it, it, the way I'm using it, I would call it number one. And I definitely would say it's the number one eyeshadow palette that I've done all year. So I'm keeping it short this year for eyeshadow palettes. Um, you know, hopefully I'll be buying more. I haven't been buying eyeshadow palettes in general as much as I usually do. I recently just bought a couple of indie brands that I'm trying out. Um, but I will say... I know if it's just because I own so much, so it's hard to impress me at this point. It's hard to find something unique for me to um, try out. Um, but yeah, eyeshadows have not, I haven't been wowed by the eyeshadows that have come out this year, honestly. Um, so we'll see if the second half, um, if things pick up with eyeshadows. Um, yeah, so like I said, those have been my trends. I've been less interested in eyeshadows been obviously huge into blush and lipsticks. Um, lipsticks, I've been really into like berry tones um, and same thing with blushes. I appreciate doing more no makeup looks and having light makeup looks. I've been using lighter makeup, not today, but like just in general. Um, so I actually don't mind certain complexion products or certain products being less pigmented. Um, yeah, so I don't know, but it's been a fun six months and we will see what the second six months hold. So thank you for sticking with me. I know this was a super long video, um, but yeah, this has been fun. I can't wait to see you in the next video and show you the next item that comes into my collection. But until then, have a great day. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe, um, but have a fantastic day. Bye.